Hello and God bless you, brothers and sisters. My name is Reverend Jared Reed Smith, and I'm a minister here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor is Dr. Johnny Calvin Smith. God bless you and thank you for joining me, brothers and sisters. It brings me great joy to bring you your Sunday school lesson because we are his work in progress. Now, we would love to invite you to join us in our worship experience. Sunday morning, I always say, starts with Sunday school. Join us in person. Of course, I uh, I share uh, this Sunday school lesson, just a brief overview, but then we come in person uh, and it helps us for those that are able to get more uh, application to the lesson and to help us learn a little bit more and to be strengthened by our brothers and our sisters. So join us for in-person Sunday school starting at 10 a.m. Now, of course, uh, right immediately following Sunday school, we go into our morning worship experience at 11 a.m. Wednesday night, Finding Time with God. That is our adult Bible a series. Our pastor, Dr. Smith, has taken us through the book of First Peter. We just started on last week, so you're not missing anything. Please join us. There is a link in the description of this video where you can join us via Zoom or you can join us live via our live stream on our YouTube page. Now, of course, if you'd like to be a blessing to the Mount Moriah Church, uh, please, please, you can give according to that which God has placed upon your heart. There is a link in the description of this video, and you can continue to bless us as we build our new uh, sanctuary for the glory of God. This Saturday, we are having a food pantry distribution at our church starts at I believe it starts at nine o'clock. That is a correct, it starts at nine o'clock. So feel free uh, to join us for that and spread the word for those that might be in need. I believe that's all the announcements. I guess I'm just ready to get into the word. So uh, let's do that. But before we do, let's pray. Gracious God, we do say thank you. Thank you for everything. Lord, please bless this word like only you can in Jesus name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our lesson for today comes from the book of John. One of my favorite chapters, John chapter 15. John 15, we'll be looking at verses 1 through 17. The lesson topic is the true vine, the true vine. Now, of course, uh, I've been doing things a little bit differently here lately. So let me go ahead and give you that outline uh, for your consideration. Verses 1 through 8, a command to abide. Verses 9 through 17, command to love. Now, of course, we have been, and I've been blessed by going through the these I am statements. John is the only writer uh, that gives us all of these statements, these seven I am statements of Christ. Uh, and it's just beautiful in the context of the book of John. And we've already gone through them. But if I believe this is our last week of going through the I am statements. So if you don't mind, let's kind of do a brief review, as I stated uh, previously in another recording, uh, after opening up that bakery in the wilderness, Jesus says that which he opened up that bakery in John chapter six, Jesus says that I am the bread of life before and after Jesus gives sight to the blind in John chapter nine. He says that I am the light of the world before uh, he tells Lazarus to come forth. He told Martha that he was the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11. Uh, and then you have to know that I am the door. He says that in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. Uh, John chapter 10, I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11, verse 25. And so he goes on. He goes on and on. And this leads us uh, to our portion, which we are in. In John chapter 13 through 17, the master is taking these disciples up into the upper room. And of course, he's taught them along the way. He's healed the sick. He's raised the dead. He's given sight to the blind. But now he needs to prepare them for what is next, right? Uh, but he didn't come here to stay. Jesus was trying to get them to understand the context and get not only get the people to understand who Jesus was, but the, the disciples had to get a good understanding of who Jesus was and what his true mission was. In chapter 13, along of the book of John's of, of the book of John, Jesus explained, he displayed humility. He dismissed Judas, he uh, Peter, he predicted the denial of Peter and spoke of his departure. And so Jesus really wanted them to understand uh, that he had to get out of here. 
And then in John chapter 14, very mem memorable uh, chapter, we get to John chapter 14 and, and now he's looking around at their faces in this upper room and these, these disciples are discouraged. So he tells them in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions, but, but I'm not going to tell you about the place we're not giving you the path. Peter, or, or Thomas rather, that doubter, he's going to say that we don't know the way. Well, Jesus says that I am the way. John chapter 14, verse 6. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And of course, this leads us into John chapter 15. Jesus is still with his disciples in the upper room according, and we take that. Now, there's many different uh, thoughts about where exactly uh, this is coming from. Some people say that he has now left the upper room and the reason why he's going to use the vine as a uh, a way of understanding, he's going to use that in a way of understanding. Uh, they say that he used the vine because they were walking uh, by some vine. So a lot of people think uh, that according to uh, that uh, in John chapter 15, that they had already left the upper room. I take it from John chapter 18, uh, principally looking, excuse me, principally looking at John chapter 18, and you want to look at uh, John chapter 18, verse 1, and it says, when Jesus had thus spoken, when Jesus had thus spoken these words, he went forth uh, with his disciples over the brook. And so that's why we take that Jesus in John chapter 15 is still in the upper room, but because it says after his prayer in John 17, uh, that after Jesus had spoken those words, after John chapter 17, after he had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples. And so there we can go, and, and it's not much to debate. It's not really, a, uh, as I like to say in layman's terms, it's not really a big deal. Uh, but there's many different thoughts about where this is actually taken forth. But regardless of the fact, Jesus helps them to understand uh, that in order to do true ministry, you're going to have to be connected to me. And you're going to have to stay connected to me. Jesus is still with disciples. Uh, the disciples were troubled, but he encouraged them uh, with assurances of the prepared place for them. He promised the return. Their power was going to be with them, the presence of the Holy Spirit and his abiding peace. And that all comes from John chapter 14. They were going to be well equipped for this ministry journey. But despite the hard times, Jesus was leaving them with spiritually sufficient resources. But you're going to have to stay connected to me. Brothers and sisters, I could preach this thing, but I'm going to try to stay calm. But I'm going to tell you, if we're going to do anything for Christ, we have to abide in the vine. We have to abide in the vine. He will let them know in John chapter 15, there has to be union communion and disunion. Now we're not going to get all the way uh, to the end, but I want you to know that that's all in John chapter 15. There had to be a union and there had to be communion. First, you got to have a relationship with me. Oh, I think I'm there. See, because the first lesson that we get from this vineyard experience is there has to be a need for the relationship. There has to be relationship. See, I can't have communion without having union first. Oh, y'all, come on. Am I there? I can't have communion with, uh, with, with, with Christ. I can't have communion with Christ until I have union with him first. See, I can't appreciate, uh, oh, uh, I don't want to get too drastic, but I really can't have communion with my wife until she's my wife first. In other words, what am I trying to say? There has to be relationship first. And so he goes on, let's go on through this text and I'm going to try to calm down. But I love John chapter 15. He says, uh, and this, this we see that John chapter 15, verse one, he says, I am the true vine, meaning Christ. And this is in red letters. Like I tell the young people, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman and every branch in me that beareth, let's read verses one and two. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth, forth, beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. All right. 
So it's all about relationship. First understanding is that in order for there to be a relationship with Christ and believers, there had to be a relationship between Christ and God the Father. See, do y'all see that? I could not get to God without Jesus having a relationship with God himself. That's why he starts off John chapter 15, verse one, where he says, I am the true vine, but my father is the husbandman. Everything is about relationship. There had to be a relationship between Christ and God before I could even get to believe in Jesus, which would get me salvation through the father. And in this relationship, there are distinct roles, brothers and sisters. See, the son, uh, he humbled himself to the father. So he says that I'm the true vine and my father, which is God, the father is the farmer or the, or the husbandman. That's what we mean by the husbandman, the father. See, God, the father planted me. That's what Jesus is saying. Now he's using this figurative language. Y'all understand what he's saying. God sent the son. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So says John chapter three, verse 16. So God, the father planted me, meaning Jesus here. And the father as the former, not only plants, but he protects me. He says, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. Why am I the true vine? Because God's chosen people couldn't get it together. So the father dispatched the true vine. See, I'm going to make it clear. There is nothing wrong with the vine. I'm the true vine. I want y'all to really understand. It's about the relationship. And so he says that there was nothing wrong with the vine in itself. See, I am the true vine. Why am I the true vine? Because uh, the true vine, because the vine, that is God's chosen people, couldn't get it together. They, they missed the Messiah. They were not understanding who they had in Jesus Christ. So he tells them, I am the true vine. He makes it very clear that it's all about relationship. Look at verses one through eight. You'll see the phrase in me uh, six times and we'll get to it. But you already saw it in verse two. Every branch in me uh, that beareth uh, fruit. Verse four, abide in me. Uh, verse four, again, it says, uh, and I and you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Verse five, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. Verse six. Oh, this is good. If a man abide not in me. Verse seven, if ye abide in me, it's about a relationship. You see, you see, brothers and sisters, you can be a part of a local body. You can be a part of the church, but not a part of the universal body. I can, I can join Mount Moriah, but if I have not given my heart and my soul over to the Lord, meaning if I have not accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior, I might be a member of Mount Moriah, but I'm not a, a member of the church. That means when Jesus comes back, so says 1 Corinthians chapter 15, with the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sign, and basically at the rapture, I ain't going nowhere because I am not connected. It's about relationship. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. I could be connected uh, to Mount Moriah, but not connected to the master. So it's about relationship. What did Nicodemus say in chapter three, verse five? Jesus answered Nicodemus, he says, marvel not uh, that, that ye say unto this, except, except, I'm sorry, Jesus asked very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He goes on in verse seven of chapter three, and he says, marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. But not only do we understand, brothers and sisters, I don't know why I'm preaching. I'm almost preaching right here. But you have to understand, verse 2 says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So we've seen in verse 2, no fruit, fruit, and then more fruit. Do y'all see that in the text? Now, of course, fruit 
is, is symbolic. And here it's talking about this, this fruit is what a plant produces on the outside that other people can see. It is the visible evidence of the inner working of the power. So in other words, what he's talking about is what we produce. Thus, it becomes our responsibility as believers to be productive. And we can't be productive without the proper relationship with Christ. So that's why he goes on. He goes on to verse three and he assures the 11 that they, uh, that they had been cleansed. And so he says in verse three, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And so he goes on and he says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So he tells them in verse three, be assured these 11, remember, we're not talking about, we're not talking about Judas. So it's the 11 that they had been cleansed through the word, but now he needs to instruct them further on what it means. Now that we have this union, now you needed to have communion. Y'all with me? Now that we've taken care of, we've taken care of the union piece. We have the relationship. We've been cleansed. And that's the same thing for us, brothers and sisters. When you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we have union with Christ. We have union with God. Now we got to work on communion. We have to work on communion. And so there has to be relationship, but now we got to work on how can I reproduce? How can I be uh, productive? How can I do that? You must learn, brothers and sisters, to rely on God. Verse four, he says, abide in me. And I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. And then verse five, he goes on to say, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me, ye can do nothing. See, you have to rely on the Lord. How do I rely? Well, that's through communion. Don't miss this. Don't miss this, brothers and sisters. We're not talking about at this point, soul salvation. I'm already there. I have my union. Jesus is saying, this is another step. This is uh, what you may want to think about is sanctification. This is my daily walk. I've been justified by faith. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. As old people, you say, I got my ticket in my hand, but now I got to have my daily walk. I have to abide. That means a daily walk with Christ. Don't miss that. Don't miss it. It's a prerequisite in order for us to bear fruit with Christ. We have to abide in the vine. That means we have to rely on the Lord. We can't allow this world to disrupt our production for Christ. We have to abide. So Christ assured them in verse five that I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit for with me, he can do any, he can do nothing without me. That's what it says. For without me, you can do nothing. So we moved from verse two, no fruit, verse two, fruit, underline it if you want to, verse two, more fruit. And then in verse five, much fruit, much fruit in verse five. Verse six says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch as and is with it, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So verse six reassures us that lifeless and burned branches, those who are professing Christians will be judged. And Judas Iscariot is definitely a prime example on that. But not only do we have to have the relationship for reproduction, we have to rely on the Lord, but God wants to see results. Starting in verse seven, and I need to hurry up because I sing like I'm preaching. He says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask of what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Now, he's not talking about we get whatever we want. But when I am relying on the Lord, when I am in total communion with the Lord, then I'm not going to just ask for just anything. What it says is my will will be lost in his will. So I will ask for things according to his will. Something like this. Give us this day our daily bread. Not give me steak and potatoes every single day, but give me this day. Lord, just don't give me what I want. Lord, Just I just need to make sure my needs are met. And he's already promised that. I don't know why I'm about to preach, but he says he will supply all my needs according to my need, according to his riches 
in glory. Verse 8 says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Then we go on into verse 9. Verse 9 uh, I'm a, oh man, I'm just so excited about the word of God. Verse nine says, as the father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. So now he goes, he goes to help them to understand that we have to really comprehend this true love that he's talking about. He goes on to say in verse 10, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So if we fully comprehended the love of which we, which we speak, which we know of Christ, we would indeed abide in that love. Uh, the emphasis is the obedience uh, to Jesus's commands. Now there's no secret to this. The only way that you can have and share this love is when you abide in the Lord. That means rely on him. That's sanctification, the daily walk yielding to the Holy Spirit. Verse 11 through 13, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might be remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. I love this verse 13, greater love have no man uh, than this, that a man lay down uh, his life for his friends. Here uh, we see another blessing that the result of abiding in Jesus is going to be joy in our life. And not only will we have love, but we will have joy. And the real test is now given. Not only are we to respond by loving Jesus, but we also to love one another the same way Jesus loves us. Now, I don't think I need to elaborate on that. You probably understand Jesus set forth even a higher standard. He said that you'll never know any type of love. No greater love is possible than that which is shown when the person gives his life for his friends. And I'm glad I, I'm not going to preach this. <laughs> oh, boy, I want to go off right there. But Jesus is my friend because he gave his life uh, for me. Verse 14, he said, ye are my friends. Y'all see that in the text? That's why Jesus said, they said, ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. So uh, we see that Paul was even a voluntary slave for Jesus as we should be. And while we are in one uh, sense slaves of Christ, we also are his friends as we live in obedience to him. Uh, he could say this uh, to his disciples because he had told them everything God had revealed uh, to him. Verse 16 and 17 and then we'll be done for today. God bless. Ye have not sh chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. So although it was common for followers to choose of which teacher they wanted to learn from, especially in biblical days. And we have that example today. Jesus lets them know uh, that he reminded the disciples that he was the one that did the choosing. Jesus always remains uh, central and our prayer should be presented to the father in his name. We must remember this great command that he commands us even in verse 17. These things I command you that ye love one another. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I love you. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. May God keep you from the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church family.